Hello class, congratulations on completing week one. It's definitely been a joy beginning to get to know each one of you. And I very much appreciate your vulnerability in sharing some of your crisis and trauma situations on the discussion board this week. So thank you very much. Uh, for those of you who have had me in courses past, uh, you know that my lectures uh, tend to be not always pertaining directly to the material that we have read in the text, um, But and, and this class's lectures will be the same. My goal in doing these lectures is not to simply regurgitate the information that we've been learning in our textbooks. I feel like you guys have already put enough time in, in, in learning about what the texts have to say. So these lectures are going to be very similar in that um, my goal is to add perspective, some case examples, and hopefully some provoking thought for you guys. So the three areas that I wanted to focus on in this week's lecture is grief, trauma, and loss. So we're going to go ahead and start with grief, or excuse me, we're going to start with trauma, my bad. Um, and I really, really love the definition that Floyd's text gives in that trauma at the most basic level is a wound. And the reason I love that is for a few different reasons. First of all, trauma, like a wound, is subjective. What is traumatic for you might not necessarily be traumatic for me and vice versa. Based on your background, protective factors, risk factors, healthy and unhealthy coping skills, we're subject to various types of trauma, as well as the ability to deal with that trauma. Also, trauma is like a wound in that it can be healed. If you think about, um, if you were to be riding um, a motorcycle down a gravel road and you spun out and flew off the bike and ended up with like a gaping wound on your arm, um, there's essentially two ways that you can heal that wound. Uh, the first would be to go ahead and just grab a Band-Aid or a bandage and, and cover over that wound. And really from a surface level, you would have the appropriate dressing and, and it might appear that you have dealt with the wound. But what really happens when you deal with a wound like that is you're not kind of fleshing it out. You're not necessarily getting the gravel out of it. You actually are creating a space for more infection and, and more woundedness to take place, even though on the outside it might look like the wound is taken care of. However, a wound can also be taken care of by going to your doctor and having it fleshed out with that antiseptic spray. And while it feels painful, Initially, what happens is that when we're willing to clean that wound out from the inside out, it begins to heal in such a way that it leaves a scar, but it's not with infection and all of those sorts of things. So wounds and trauma are very similar in that. Um, a lot of times, people, when they go through a traumatic situation, they like to cover it up with a Band-Aid. Maybe it's a physical appearance as far as, I have everything okay. Um, or maybe it's some instant gratification or choosing to stuff those emotions or what's gone on. And while that might work for a little bit, what we find is that the infection is still there and usually it's festering and so it creates something that is just not healthy and it, it's going to come out one way or the other. Or you can deal with trauma in the second way, in that while it's more painful to deal with in the moment, to flesh it out, to re-deal with all the painful events that have happened, what you find is that the change is going to be lasting. Trauma is like a wound also, in that it leaves a scar. So, when a wound is healed in the right way, like we just discussed with our bike analogy, while the pain might no longer reside as it once did, there is a scar that remains. The scar is what other people see. They see it in our stories, in our experiences, in how we relate to others, how we view the world, and how we um, deal with other crisis and trauma situations. The thing is with a scar though, is that it's a reminder that the wound was there, but it doesn't have to define somebody's life. Trauma is also like a wound in that it takes time to heal. Again, back to the bike riding or motorcycle analogy. If we treat a client's wound or a patient's wound in the appropriate way, it seems obvious that the wound would actually take time to heal. However, when we give the wound the appropriate time to heal, the change and the healing that we see is lasting as it's from the inside out rather than just trying to maintain a gaping wound 
with mediocre measures. Trauma, like a wound, is the same way. Healing from the inside out, while lasting, can sometimes take time. And sometimes there's complications. Sometimes in the healing process, there are setbacks or pauses in healing. But that's okay. When we're giving our wound or our trauma the necessary time to heal without rushing it, the change that we see is lasting and impactful. And finally, trauma is like a wound in that there's no one way or timetable that needs to be put into place exclusively in order for trauma to be dealt with. Some people's bodies react differently to different medications and wound treatments. The same is true with trauma. What might be helpful for one client might not be helpful for the next and vice versa. In a traumatic situation, it's important to gauge the client's ability of how far they can go in a given session. It's not our jobs as a therapist to push a client towards the next step in healing in order to maintain an agenda, but rather it's to bear witness with them to their pain in an effort to let them go through the process. So when we're dealing with a traumatic situation, there's a few things that we need to be with, aware of as individuals. So this would be called the person of the therapist. The things that we need to be aware of is that our job in dealing with a trauma is not to push an agenda. Our goal isn't to rush them through a trauma therapy in order to get to the end. Our job is not to heal them. Their job is to heal themselves. When we talk about that bike analogy and the wound healing from the inside out, the body is doing the work. It's the person doing the work. The doctor might be there to aid in that process, but essentially that person's body is the one doing the work. And in trauma counseling, the same is the, is the true, is true for them. We're there to bear witness, to support, and to guide, but we don't do the healing for them. And like I said earlier, our job is to bear witness to the pain that is realized and unrealized. Sometimes a client's going to come into our office who's been in a traumatic situation and they just need somebody to bear witness with them to what's just happened, to mirror back to them, to give them permission to feel. And that is our job as therapists. 